Hi everybody, we're going to do a real quick video here in the bass department. I don't know if any of you guys uh, have seen Getty Lee's book of bass. Getty Lee needs no introduction, and Getty Lee has just a massive collection of basses. And it's rumored he's going to open up a museum, and there's just all kinds of really cool, fun stuff in this book with lots of pictures. If you're really into bass, lately I would recommend getting books like this. They don't stay in print forever, but the information you'll get out of books like this can be valuable to you as you collect books, and there are certain things that um, you might never know. Speaking of collectible bases, we just got this in, and I think it's just utterly gorgeous. Um, this is a Candy Red 1966 P Base. So you can see it has the original covers. We got it from the daughter of the original owner. It has your classic pre CBS width neck, which is pretty wide. The Jazz Base came out with a uh, thinner neck, and um, I am, let's see, ah, there I am. I am going through a 1959 tweed basement and it's these are the world's greatest guitar amps but you know what most guys used them for basses because they're a basement This bass you can see is worn out just a little bit and here I'm going to have the cut camera come in. Uh, candy apple red is a cool color because it's multiple colors and you can see the gold in there. These bases will come in either a silver undercoat or a gold undercoat and that comes through on the finish. So it's a first it's a, a primer finish that goes on here and you can see bits of that there. And then there is the color and that'll be gold first and then red and then several layers of clear over that and that just makes candy apple red stand out. That color, I am told, was invented here in town by a guy that painted cars and um, there's kind of a cool history but this is white pickguard, um, clean, straight and there is enough wear and tear on here that you know it's original finish uh, and this is just a great sounding base. Clarity. I play with a pick, so that adds more clarity. All right, now we also have uh, in our stash this 1966. Now this 66 is a little more worn out on the back, and it has a cracked pick guard right up here, which you could put another screw in. But we are giving you in this base another pick guard. This is the original pick guard because of its its clarity and its lightness we thought we'd put that on there and leave it on there but this 66 is still where they have a lacquer finish these bases all have three strap buttons yeah right that one right back there that is stock from fender and that is so you could hang it from the headstock like this i call it hootenanny style where your strap would hang here instead of here and you can see what happens when you have the strap here uh it 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 is well balanced on that. The Fender quit doing that to save money, but it's a kind of a cool little feature. This has flat wounds on it. Kind of hard to hear the difference in basses, but you all know the P bass. You've heard it a million times. This is the most recorded bass in history. I dare say if it wasn't for Fender's P bass, there would be no rock and roll. When Fender created the precision bass with frets, guys didn't have to drag around their big stand-up basses. That means you had smaller vehicles. That means you had larger amps, which means you had a bigger dance floor and you had more, more people moving in. The birth of rock and roll really started with the fretted bass. Last, I have something really cool I want to show you, and that is these two basses, Fenders, were a 66. This is a 67 T-Bird bass. And uh, the T-Bird bass also kind of needs no introduction. And a, a, a different lower. People have called old Gibson basses muddy, but they're really not. They can be quite bright.
The Who famously put T-Bird pickups on his Fender bass, and uh, that uh, that they're they're well regarded. They're hum canceling. These basses too, traditionally because they have a slimmer neck, uh, like a jazz bass, they they traditionally can be weak here. You know, they have this tapered headstock like that that goes back and if you look at the fender it doesn't have that so when this base falls it could break uh, and so one of these that is this old and original owner base uh, like this one is is rare to find unbroken and it's certainly uh, a great find it's really we're excited to have it so here it is and then we even have a picture of the band that it was, the Fast Magic Band, uh, and we had a photo that we had just to make a photocopy of, but it's kind of cool to see how far back this was, and you've got your typical long hair Fu Manchu mustaches of the time period, and um, so here we go. This is a 1967 Thunderbird II, unbroken in its original case, and then we have a 66 P base in its custom color finish of candy apple red and let's all cheer now.